Good evening, everyone. My name is Christian Karasevich, and you are watching this week's episode of Social Chatter. Uh, basically, you know, we're, we have a social media marketing talk show, myself, my co-host, um, Nick Rishwain, and our goal is to help you as, you know, a social media marketer or a business owner, help you stay on the cutting edge of social media. So we basically bring you the latest news, trends, and tools that we've discovered from this past week. So I'm going to bring in um, our get, or, sorry, our co-host tonight, and then I'm also going to bring in um, our guest. And our guest is um, is Mia Voss. She's a, a travel blogger. So if you bear with me just one second, we will get everything set up, and we'll be going live to talk about this week's topics. And we've got a lot of really good ones. We actually have some that overlap, and that's going to be an interesting discussion, I think. So let's see. Um, let's uh, just hang tight with us, and we'll be up with our 75th episode of Social Chatter. So, um, so we should be, yeah, we're live now. So we're live over at facebook.com forward slash social chefs. And I'm going to bring in Nick. So Nick should be joining us here in a second. Hello, hello. What's going on, Mr. Rishwain? How are you? Doing fantastic. How are you doing? Doing well. So I'm going to send this, this link over to... Mia, because she was asking how she gets in. Okay. Uh, because we were just on appear.in testing her, uh, testing her system, making sure it was all up to date. Awesome. And by uh, the way, I'm just I'm giving everybody a quick introduction on you know what we have going on tonight. You know we've got a um, you know we've got a really great show. I actually I don't know if you've looked at the topics, but mm -hmm. um, I'm actually really excited about talking about the the two topics that overlap this week. And, you know, one of those is Facebook and one of those is from LinkedIn. Yeah, interesting overlap there, isn't it? It is. And I didn't think about this, you know, until I was like, going through the topics and, you know, writing up tomorrow's uh, blog post uh, on, you know, some of the additional news that we also have. And, you know, I, I'm surprised that they kind of just happened to come out at the same day. They did. Yeah, very, very near. We've heard about this coming for a while. And there's a test last year, according to the article. Mm -hmm. Looks like Mia is with us today. Ooh, I think I need to change all my little. Uh... Change your settings. Yeah, where do I do that, boys? And hi. Hi, how are you doing, Mia? Hi. What's happening? Uh, count. Oh, she'll be in. She. So I think the issue that she had there was her webcam might have been blocking, being blocked by. I don't know if she had an external one. Looks like she might have. Might had she figured it out fine when we were uh, on a peer.in. So I'm guessing she doesn't need our assistance on this. Okay. Uh, even though she said, how do I do it? I think she knows exactly what she's doing because I just saw her undo that same exact problem on it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you've had, you've had a busy day today, I guess, right? And she said, let me in again. Yeah, I did have a busy day. She's uh, shoot her the invite one more time. Okay. And, Sounds good. And I'm actually just going to check our Facebook page, check facebook.com slash social chefs to see if we've got the a live broadcast going on there. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to check that out too. And it looks like it's there. Good. Yeah. Interesting stuff out of Facebook. Really interesting stuff out of Facebook. Um, the new video options are going to be pretty interesting. They're actually, yeah, they actually are. Um, some of those actually kind of, I think they already exist. Some do, yeah, some do. And others, I think, 
Uh, she said invite me in again. She must not be getting the invite. She just IM'd us in. Uh... Interesting. Just hmm. takes her to the visual. Well, let me try this. Let me actually click on the invite link. Let me see if that works for her. Okay. That worked. There you go. Yeah, what it is, you guys, I think you have to re-invite people back in again, even if that same link. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now. Really, how to, how you, I, just, you just figured this out like three minutes ago with me. Dude, I, yeah, but I don't see where I change it. Where's the full screen? Where do I change it uh, here? Because it's different than the IO screen you gave me. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, hold on. You, I want account settings. What are you, uh, you're in your browser? Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm here on the, the screen with you. I just don't see on this screen where I'm broadcasting where I can change my, uh, like I can't change my camera or my uh, if sound. You're in, if you're in, um, if you're in Google Chrome, there should be a little camera option up in your URL bar. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Thank you. Ruby. Oh, please, please continue to hold. You're important to me. You know that? Uh, it's going to be a fun night. Mia is a lot of fun. I will Sorry, I do admit. A little bit more of a hold, please. Where's my big, where's my big blue boy, my big, my big silver boyfriend? There it is. Bam. Here we go. Did that change? Yeah, it looks like you went back to the old camera. Hold on. Dang. It's not going to let me change it. Well, you look spectacular either way. Yeah. Well, I'll take that. You're a smart yeah. man, aren't you, Nick? And you've got like you've got much better decor than, than we do, I mean. Do you like my baby group? <laughs> She's a travel blogger. She's got good taste. Very nice. Oh, and I'm so privileged. <laughs> That's right. Let's just so, run that into the ground, shall we? Yeah, if Tyler and Patrick are listening, uh, I have shared with you, your thoughts with uh, Mia, and she disapproves and I disagrees. Although I get it, you know what I'm saying? I, it's like, where it's two top of the food, or three top of the food chain white people, come on. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Christian, sorry about that. Are we ready? We're, we're good to go? Sure. Um, so, uh, Mia, do you want to tell everybody about yourself? What, um, yeah. You know, you're a travel blogger, but I'll let you, you know, tell your story. Hold on. Watch this. Oh, let's get some more booze. Let's get me entertained. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's always I, entertaining. So, I, so wonder I, if, I wonder if at some point, um, if, you know, Facebook or, you know, YouTube, whatever channel you're broadcasting through, if they're going to have to have some sort of, like, you know, um, consent form that says, like, hey, I'm over, you know, 21 or or whatever. I was about that you know and you know the interesting thing is a travel blogger one of the things that i do is i work with car companies so like mm -hmm. today nick saw that uh dodge had a little event and they have reinvented they've redone the dodge challenger so now it's all-wheel drive mm -hmm. right. so of course it was 72 degrees today in denver so there was no driving in the snow at all um but i, I use that as part of my brand but then also part of my brand is i'm very well known for clinkies and and you know drinking mm -hmm. Didn't you have oh, a wine? Didn't you do wine on Blab back in the day? I used to do the Wine Wednesdays on Blab, and now I have a show that Courtney Smith Kramer and I are pitching. Uh, we did a um, a pilot called Getting Tasted, and it was she and I harassing the crap out of the sommelier. I remember the sommelier. <laughs> I remember the sommelier very distinctly. Yes. Yeah, so, um, so yeah, there's a lot of that, but the luxury travel blogger is basically, I'm a, a woman over 50 that's uh, representing women in their forties and fifties who are still doing cool stuff, but were marginalized in the market. Um, and then showing that people can still do some pretty cool stuff and kind of buck the system a little bit. So, and then I, you know, I take people along with me and it's all storytelling because this is I feature they always have a cool story, why they started their bed and breakfast or their hotel or why that chef has that dish. And, so, you know, it's, it goes above and beyond the uh, ubiquitous um, picture of the feet at the pool, you know, like, oh, so blessed, look at me. Like, you're like, really? Shut up. Yeah. Uh, and and <laughs> you really do go above and beyond. We got to see Brandon, your intern, 
B turn, I think you oh, called my it. Beach yeah, turn. it. My beach turn. Yeah, uh, which was really cool. Legend. And then you took us to his graduation uh, through through multiple different platforms. Uh, and and guess what? Uh, if you remember too, how and how he found me was through Snapchat. He just snapped me. It was like, hey, I really like what you're doing. He saw that I'd went to the White House correspondence, uh, the pre parties. I didn't get into the dinner. And I certainly wouldn't go now. <laughs> you should have. Uh, you should have given me a call. I was. I, I'm here in the area, so. Oh, you yeah. are. Oh, dude, how fun! I I will definitely be back. I have friends at CNN and ABC, which is how I got there. But um, so he saw that and reached out, and this kid just turned out to be the most amazing addition to my life. His mom and I are going to Vegas in uh, in July. <laughs> really? You became friends with mom as yeah. well, huh? I did. Yeah. She just goes, call your son, see what he's doing. So <laughs> Yeah, so that was very cool. It, it, you do some I did. And I you know what I do a lot, you guys, is I live stream. So um we were just kind of joking today, like I did a, a promo up in Devil's Thumb here in Colorado, and I live streamed the zip lining. Fair enough. Why not? Yeah. Just didn't drop the phone. And I live streamed from a hot air balloon. I got up to like two thousand feet. I mean, it's just you just try it and see if it works. Yeah. And everything you do, you're always entertaining. Partially, and I've said this before, because you've got the personality of a 15-year-old boy. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, let me tell you something. I felt like a 15-year-old boy today driving that Dodge Challenger. Oh. I bet. I bet. Well, should we jump right Challenger. into our topics tonight? Yeah, let's do it. Thanks. Thanks for having me, you guys. You guys notes, I guess, right? Got the notes? Uh, yes, right. for your uh, peanut gallery. Very cool. And, so, and Nick, where do you want to start? What do you want to start with tonight? We got a lot of good stuff. Let's start with Twitter reducing their ads. Okay. What do we got going yeah. on here? Yeah. So Twitter, let me pull up the correct link, which I'm failing to do here. Trimming down their ads products, which is interesting after a lackluster performance last week with their earnings, uh, they have decided that. I have got the wrong link here. Where is this? There you go. I'll put it in the chat for you. There we go. There's I've got it. So can I just point out something really interesting too? I, it's so interesting that they just stay at four percent year after year, and, and it's it's so, it's so odd. What a flat number. And three and three hundred nineteen million active users. So in the last what eighteen months or two years, they haven't really. Yeah. They, I mean, they've grown, but they they're still mm -hmm. in that low 300 number uh but those of us who What's use that? it use it pretty consec consecutively or consistently i think uh, do you guys both use it pretty consistently i use it constantly and i i do too actually i mainly have been using it a lot with with um with our social chefs twitter account actually and i mean we've seen you know really explosive growth on that um but i actually i like the idea of twitter actually condensing these ad products actually yeah um, so the you know what we saw recently was in, and I want to say this is in the last six months or last year is basically that, that third tweet down in your newsfeed being a promoted tweet. And it seems that people have gotten used to that being a promoted tweet and just pass it when they're looking in the newsfeed. Uh, and, and that could be on a profile page as well. Generally about the third tweet down being a right. promoted tweet. And it looks like, it, doesn't it? This is the hand motion. You're just you're just scrolling on down. Yeah, you just scroll right on past it. You're you say and rarely, rarely, even for the brand account that I run for experts, rarely do I see uh, a promoted tweet that is applicable to what we do or litigation related or anything. So that seems to be maybe one of the problems is their algorithm for for the ads not being pertinent, but they're trimming down their ads. Yeah, they're calling it a course correct, and uh, which we've heard numerous course corrects from Twitter recently, and eliminating some of their ads. And I guess their ad products have gotten to be, you know, when you go in to run an ad uh, from a brand perspective, if you're going in to run an ad, that dashboard has gotten pretty difficult to manage because you're not sure what you're buying as as a brand or a business right and it does say just as a twitter as a consumer product was confusing 
requiring too much work. It sounds like the platform itself. And you guys would know that is it, you know, you're like, which one of y'all kick me? I can't figure out what, what I'm doing here. Right. That's right. That's right. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, what are your thoughts on this, Christian? You think I it's... like the fact that Twitter is doing this. I mean, I think that, you know, we, we talked about this before. I mean, they've been starting to make a lot of changes and they're kind of almost like too little, like, I don't know, I want to say like too little late almost because I mean, I like the fact that they're connecting their ads, but I also wonder, you know what, why does Twitter have this problem with people not knowing how to use it, people not knowing how to run ads, you know, being confused by all this stuff, but Facebook doesn't have the same problem. I mean, Facebook has so many other, like, you know, different levels of ads that you can run, you know, and the thing that Twitter is killing off, they're killing off a lot of the ads that actually work really well on Facebook. It it is bizarre. It is bizarre, and and I've said this before, Mia, in on the last ep- I think on the last episode or an episode with Brian Penzo, I mentioned that that I tend to like Twitter and Snapchat uh, above others, and uh, is that my desire to use a more complicated system? I don't know, but I seem to like those two platforms even more than Facebook and, and, uh, and certainly more than Instagram. So Are you talking about personally or from running a, a brand perspective? Both, but probably oh. more, more personally. Uh, I, I appreciate them both. Um, so but, is that, like the easiest that you think of. And, and I, I use a lot and I, because my brand is uh, me personally is the brand, right? right? Um, so that keeps it a little simple. Oh, Melissa says boo. Uh oh. <laughs> He's boring already. me. I'm I'm quite certain. <laughs> um, but I, I I will say I I'm like that. I can I just tell an interesting story about Twitter. Um, and I've been using this as a as a case study. But I have this friend. He's in his fifties. He's never really used Twitter. He he has the most boring business you've ever seen. He has a uh, a a business that makes signs for hardware stores. <laughs> right? Like I'm sleeping by the time the words are coming out of my mouth. Right. And, but he decided to sort of reinvent himself because he's selling his business and got on Twitter. And I uh, go follow him. He's um uh I'm I'm not that John, right? It's John Anderson. And he's just done the most amazing thing with this thing. He'll he'll post something, and nothing is about business, you guys. It's all about interacting. Um, and he will post something and it gets like you know, 50 shares and, you know, 80 likes. I'm like, dude, like where you, it's the magic thing. And it's, and I don't know if that's the sign of the times for Twitter, but it's because he's literally just engaging with people that first of all, are so clever. I read what a lot of these people write. I'm like, golly, somebody wrote, oh, this is what he tweeted. They wrote, not today, uh, sock with the hole in the toe, not today. Like that was the only <laughs> And it was hilarious. And so that got all this action. And for me, like working with brands, and that's why I use Twitter because we have, a, and with a, my board of influencers, you've heard me talk about, mm-hmm. we all say, um, you know, we're going to, we're going to share this. Even that, we don't get half the, you know, half the uh, ass. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> for there. <laughs> for those of you just turning in, you and you don't know Mia, you just got there to know go. Mia. Yeah. <laughs> you, um, can you tell everybody real quickly, uh, segue why somebody is there and with yeah, you? I'm sorry, uh, Christian didn't know about this, uh, but but Tika is oh. in the frame. She got special <laughs> dispensation tonight because <laughs> Mia loves her. Yeah. So, oh my god! I uh, tune into Snapchat just to watch what you know what T- Tika is going to tinkle on. <laughs> Yeah, so she she got the the doors to the office are open uh, <laughs> tonight so that she could come on and see Mia. Very nice. Anyway, thank, and thank you for that. But that's my take on it. I just find it interesting about Twitter that the people that are I, I just and you should go see if you have a chance and I'll put that in there. Just go follow him because it's so cool to see this. What in some ways it was truly meant for because they just I mean these guys just share out and they just get so many. Hearts and uh, reshares and, and retweets. So I actually That's thought good. what you were going to tell me was because you said he made ho- signs for hardware stores, right? I thought you were going to tell me that like he created some like you know these like funny sayings on these little you know hardware plaques. No, he's a, it, it's a it's a rebranding. He's just decided he's a 55 year old guy that's retiring and he wants and he's written a blog about that he wants to sort of share his mom died of cancer when he was very young. So he, he writes on that and it's just all a, a new avenue of expression for him. Very cool. 
Very cool. And and it does work. It just it it's all engagement on any platform that you're on. So yes. it that's what works. That uh, one seems to work for him more than anything. So it's very interesting to see what you know what I mean. And and running brands in your experience, you do most of it on Facebook, right? Uh, for me, I use all, I'm going to pop him in here. Poor John. He's like, why are you always telling my story? I'm like, cause it's cool as hell, dude. Um, <laughs> there you go. Um, I, I use all like, so for instance, uh, uh, when I, like today I did the car thing with Dodge. Well, I just put that on my personal profile because that tends to get, um, you know, it's interesting. I, I represent women over 40, but my audience is 50, 50 males and females, 30 to 60 across the board. So I use my Facebook personal. I really don't actually use the, the, the meal on the go doesn't get as much. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I use Facebook, Instagram. It's all about shiny pictures. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Excellent. And uh, so what we had up next, it looks like Christian were more choices over your LinkedIn content. Now, Mia, this will be interesting. I don't know how much you use LinkedIn as a travel blogger, but I, I uh, go ahead. Oh, yeah, I, this this article, they're giving you, it, you, you may have seen this, we've all seen this, more than 3 million of our members contribute, and this is LinkedIn, the LinkedIn blog, contribute content to LinkedIn every week, providing insights, expertise, etc. In order to continue fostering the sharing of knowledge and expertise, we've made some key enhancements for members who publish on LinkedIn, most recently revamping the publishing platform to offer a cleaner writing experience and improving how long form articles show up to relevant and target audiences across LinkedIn. So you can disable or, in, or enable comments on your articles. You can report inappropriate comments and- I'd be in trouble. You'd be in trouble. Uh, and you can, this is an interesting feature that I noticed and I don't see it mentioned here, uh, but you can also, and they have a very odd way of doing this. You can also, if you're tired of seeing somebody's content because it's not appropriate to you, you can click the arrow and you can choose undisconnect you from the person. It just means you're no longer going to see them in your news feed. But I thought unfollow was an interesting word to use for hide these, uh, hide this person. I don't want to see stuff from this person anymore. Um, Copycat. What, what are your thoughts on the changes, Christian? Um, I think that, you know, just LinkedIn overall, I like, again, I kind of think LinkedIn, Twitter, they're all playing catch up to Facebook. Um, you and I, I know, have had a lot of side conversations just about LinkedIn in general, or sorry, about Microsoft in general and how Microsoft could have, you know, done this with Skype or LinkedIn and whatnot. And you think, again, I mean, they're kind of playing catch up. Um, I think that some of these changes are good in a sense. But I also think that there's so much on LinkedIn, it just is making it very confusing to a lot of users. Um, they're pushing people, I think, based on this and the other update we have from LinkedIn, I think they're pushing people towards that paid paid model, um, which could, you know, uh, could come back to uh, bite them. Yeah. Mia, what are your thoughts? Um, I just, I think it's interesting that I, LinkedIn just seems to be traditionally like, they, like, oh, let's just do an update just to do it. Do you know what I'm saying? Just because that's what the cool kids are doing every time they do that i still can't figure out where to find out how many people are following me or how many people on you know what i'm saying you have to click and like pull down two right. windows on my dude you lost me already and like click on this you know what i mean like you, and, and they just move it all around so i feel like it's like that shell game or something where it's like i'm just gonna move stuff around um just to, to make it look you know what i mean like thanks for the shell game but i still don't know what the hell you're doing and, and by the way, you know that means they just, you know, I, I just, I actually loaded up their profile, my profile now, and I loaded it up earlier. And earlier today, for instance, I couldn't figure out where to actually post a status update because every screen was like, you know, it said like, you know, write a post and then you clicked on that and it took you to the, you know, the blogging piece. Right. So I had to go through a couple of different menus on LinkedIn. Did you do that? But then now I go through it and it says, hey, uh, share an article. You know, it looks just like I'm logged into Facebook, share an article, photo or update. And I can easily identify where to post something and see who's viewing my profile. Um, you know, it's, it's it's all right there in front of me now. So. Uh, and yeah. and uh, Ross is saying that he he got the new profile. Not good so far. Um, Melissa, I'm loving her. She's hilarious. She's like, that's me in Snapchat. Sorry, I think <laughs> I'm 
second. Yeah. Uh, that, yeah. You, you're like, wait, what do I, Oh my God. Snapchat. I was like the old man in the club at first. I'm like, <laughs> good God. I can hear what was, I felt really awkward about that. Um, Don says, uh, Don, who by the way, runs my world, uh, says job security for me, hashtag job security for me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, a job security yeah. for Vivica uh, von Rosen too. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Vivica is the you know is a, a a LinkedIn expert, I guess, is what or, or LinkedIn is her platform that she that consults her, on regularly. Yes, yes. But and, don't, you, don't you kind of feel like they think the word they confuse the word update with just confused? It's like that you know that word doesn't mean what you think it means because when they they do, I feel like they're just moving things around. I haven't seen anything, but. Ross just mentioned that about about Facebook profiles. Don't yeah, you know, that. I I I think that this update and and giving you more control over your newsfeed is a lot better. I've been spending more time on LinkedIn. Uh, it's clearly where our for for the for the brand and for me personally, it's where the audience is that we certainly try in a attack. So I like this update. It is cleaner than it was. Ooh. I spent oh, no time over there. Uh, How often do you go, Nick? I go about once a day now. About once or twice a day. I'm like that person that joined the the, the, the club and then never goes. You know, the, the fitness mm -hmm. workout club. I'm like, I'll be there every two weeks. But I will say this. I go to post. I don't go to engage. And that's a problem with LinkedIn. So let me ask you this. This could be a dumb question, but like, what's the difference between writing this really long post on, say, LinkedIn? Oh, Ross Brand. <laughs> Ross doing a little. <laughs> Looks like he's doing a gift out. for us. Rob's just wants my drink. Look at. He does. There you go. Um, like, or say medium. Say that again. I missed what's it. What's the difference between like putting a bunch of stuff on that on that um. Uh, on on or you know writing a long post like you were just talking about they're like saying and then maybe putting something on medium or even writing something on your your own website which is your real estate yeah real me that one batman people i i don't know what the value is to posting on linkedin other than to linkedin uh unless you've got a highly engaged audience there and i have yet to find a highly engaged audience on linkedin I have, I think unless you're like Dai Kawasaki or these, you know, I think, I think it is the, 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 uh, uh, the, the popular kids table. Could be, could very now, well be. Now they suppress stuff too. Like Facebook does, suppresses anything that's not native uh, video. Mm -hmm. I did not know that they suppressed. I, I, I'm asking. I didn't know if they do. Oh, but. I don't know if they do, but okay. I did have uh, a teaching moment. I work a lot with family. And and somebody came in to the office, a family member from from another office came in and said, hey, why am I seeing things that are three weeks old, you know, in my in my stream? And I said, well, they've got an algorithm now where they're going to show you the ones that they think are most important to you. Sure. Like, he, I like his he, comments. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. seen things that are somewhat old or you know two hours old and i said you know it really depending on what you're liking they're going to show you more of that because they think well, that's going to keep you there that would frustrate me i know it's, I, there's one huge pet peeve i have with facebook is when it uh, automatically changes that it mm -hmm. goes from the most popular to the thing and it literally jacks my head up i'm like what freaking day is it yeah why yeah. am i seeing that right i'm seeing <laughs> why am i seeing this again Right, you know, right. Yeah, I don't like that. But I love these comments. These are these are good distinctions. And Melissa, please do add me. Um, uh, slide share. I like the name Beauty, by the way. Uh, I just want to be called Beauty. Is um, Beauty Bubble here? Oh, Beauty is here. All yeah. right. The value is someone is looking to work with you. They can see your work. Thank you, Ross. I agree. Dawn says an audience you might not be connected with anywhere else. Maybe that's the gateway, the gateway drug. I'm going to say improving your experience on LinkedIn. Um, and that, maybe that's that's a good thing, you guys, is you just take that one thing and then, you know, like you want to do is that was one thing you've cut and paste across those different platforms, your your website. Although for me, it, I just like everything going right. to. I want that. I want to go to my real estate. Yeah. Yeah. Drive more traffic to your own real estate. So that leads us to the next question. Christian, did you have anything more on that on the updates there? Um, on this particular one, no. This particular one is just about um, was just about like you know the ability to control your comments. Um, 
the next one I think is actually uh, You've got some more more input yeah. on this one. Okay, so we're on to what's new with LinkedIn Premium. Uh, that just lit Christian's face up. Do you see that? Like he just no, I missed it because I'm looking at the article, and this is also <laughs> from their blog. I'm not watching both of you. <laughs> Our two consumer subscriptions, Premium Career and Premium Business. I didn't know they had two different ones have significantly evolved over the last year to provide a more powerful premium experience. You can now take advantage of a multitude of exclusive data insights, as well as unlimited access to newly launched LinkedIn pro products like LinkedIn Learning and LinkedIn Salary. So they, a lot of data. Let's see what else they have. Looks like mostly data, money, money, money. So estimated salary in certain areas, that could be good for those searching for jobs. And LinkedIn Learning, both our premium career and premium business subscriptions now include unlimited access to more than 9,000 courses on our brand new learning platform. We help you identify the skills you need to advance your career and deliver expert-led courses for you to obtain them. Uh, so I'm assuming that these courses are gonna be Skype-based. Christian thoughts. I think when I read through this, like when I at first read through, you know, LinkedIn premium and all the updates, whether it's, you know, the, like, for instance, I think the salary thing is a fantastic thing to have access to. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I like the fact that they've got the LinkedIn jobs homepage. So they basically are taking a lot of the guesswork out of, you know, when somebody applies for a job, they have to like, you know, they don't really, you know, this is cool because like I can look at a job, I can apply for it. I can see the direction the company is trending. Um, I can see if it's actually a good fit for me. That's cool. And then, if that, and I can see salary data too and stuff like that. And so if I like, you know, if I see like a company has, like, you know, a whole bunch of negative quarters, for instance, there's a bunch of tech companies that, you know, they've had uh, negative quarters for um, a, a, a long time, I guess, for yeah. you know, the last couple of years, like that kind of stuff. I can see that in a job and say, hey, you know what? Do I actually want to work for that company? I'm not sure. Um, you know, so I like that. I like the fact that they also have the LinkedIn learning piece. Um, haven't looked at any of the courses to see how good the quality is. I know they say they're taught by like experts, but I don't really, you know, to me, when I see something like that, it kind of reminds of like Udemy or something. And most of the people on there aren't really experts, actually. Really? Um, they're just, they're, uh, do what? Uh, it, uh, is it this? Yeah, it's that. It, um, it's sort of like the everybody who claims to be an expert on social media that sort of. Yeah, I've got a PowerPoint. Call themselves a guru because that's the next step. That's right. That's the next step. That is, I mean, I love the concepts though, you guys. Is anybody else doing that? I mean, first of all, the salary thing is pretty cool. God, I wish I would have had that back when I was the, uh, uh, we had the, the air quotes in the building. Um, I wish I would have had that back when I was the nine to fiver because, you know, you, you especially if you're considering, if you have a family, if you, you know, if you're considering moving across the country, all these, these factors of like, oh gosh, this is going to cost $5 at this Safeway here in Denver and 10 at that Safeway in um in uh, silicon valley so you know that's stuff that you just end up doing all this legwork for and crunching numbers when that 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 seems pretty cool to me so hey is there anybody else that does that there's no one else that i know of but i mean i also but here's the thing the other thing i think i thought was really uh useful about this is like this service is going to cost i think it's like 25 dollars a month minimum but when you factor in all of these other things that are supposedly going to help you get jobs help you identify like that best fit where you're, you know, your puzzle piece is going to fit with the right company. Um, I think that's totally worth it. Time you know, I've been like, okay. right. Christian, if that's my money for X, then mm -hmm. the more power to it. I, I spend the money. I mean, that's what, $300 a year, right? I mean, but you probably can not do that all year though, either. Right. Get the job, mm -hmm. you're done. You know, you're done with that, that, that app. Yeah, cancel that, cancel that service right there. What, what happened? No, I do wonder what they, do what? Did Nick go dark for me, or is it just me? Nick, like it looks like he's a little silhouette. I still see all of us. Okay, cool. Then that's me. I'm sorry. It's my drinking. It's Continue. Drinking. Continue. <laughs> I was gonna say that. Um, you know, I think that I, I wonder. Like, that's the one thing I do wonder with LinkedIn. I know a lot of people would sign up and get, you know, the in mail feature and only have it for a certain amount of time and then cancel. Um, I wonder if LinkedIn would actually get into the, you know, whether they would require you to sign up for like, you know, an annual contract. Or you know, twenty five dollars a month. Yeah, because they don't want to. They don't want to have that. That uh, fallout. Yeah. Uh, right. Because they they, right. they want to. That that would be kind of crappy though, if they did do that. 
It would be because be then why you know you if you want somebody to come back in the future when they're looking for the next gig, uh, you'd hope that they come back to you and and reactivate and uh, and use it again. And it seems like it's actually a really easy thing to do. Offer you know I haven't looked at this, but offer a monthly plan and then say hey you know what we'll give you fifty dollars off if you sign up for the whole year or something. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. That way it would encourage people to stick around yeah that's where ross says there's an upsell in there somewhere yeah he did <laughs> i want to take a second to thank everybody who's here with us tonight we've got ross we've got beauty bubble melissa g from my neck of the woods we've got adam purcell over on facebook lisa monks is here with us a uh, chris Mestal is here with us mm -hmm. and who am i missing am i missing anybody don is, is here Thank I'm you. I'm going to be him in Nova Scotia this summer, by the way. It's going to be off the chain. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. So thank you, all of, our, all of our active viewers tonight. We appreciate your time. So let's move on to our next one that is semi-LinkedIn uh, connected. This is Facebook. And then we'll get to the big story. And we got a couple of tools. We got Facebook swipes at LinkedIn by letting brands post job openings on pages. Facebook counts more than 65 million businesses using its pages product and boasts that it's cheaper and more sociable than maintaining a website. Maybe. Uh, in my in my perspective, maybe it's cheaper and, and more so. It's probably more sociable. Uh, but what about when it comes time to grow and bring on more employees? Facebook didn't really offer a human resources component. So rolling out over the next few weeks, the feature lets companies tap page admins in the U.S. and Canada only to post jobs right mm -hmm. on Facebook so they can receive applications through Facebook Messenger. With this, the company has taken a swipe at LinkedIn, which has long held job opportunities in its domain. And, and so it looks like, you know, for small businesses, I think this could be big. Uh, small, medium-sized business. So I think this is a great, great opportunity. And for those looking for jobs, I think it's a good opportunity. What are your thoughts, Christian? I think that this is, you know, one, I, I like the fact that they're actually stepping into the ring with LinkedIn on this. Um, I know a while back, actually, you could go to your profile and, you know, a lot of times, what do people do in their profile? They don't put all their information on there. But I think that by having Facebook add this feature to pages, it's gonna encourage people to say, hey, you know what, I need to update my profile, I need to keep it updated, I need to make this stuff public versus making it private. Um, I think that at the, same, at the same time, it's gonna give every, I think every business, you know, a lot of businesses, they say, hey, I don't know what to post on my Facebook page. Here's the thing, you have all different types of content you can post now. You can post, you know, you can share quotes and, you know, nice images and stuff like that. You can share like things of you working with clients. But now you have job postings. So if you ever need somebody, post it to your Facebook page. That's one other piece of content. It's funneled directly into your into Messenger when somebody applies. And you don't have to spend time, you know, going over to like all these different job boards. I mean, the job boards and the job groups, for instance, Facebook groups, Facebook groups for people who want like jobs, you know, those are fine. But there's so many of those that, you know, put put it on your page and then drive people back to your page. Mia, what are your thoughts? You know, I, I can you see me okay? I know my my internet's a, a little weird. Um, no, you know, I, I feel okay. Good, good. Um, I I actually feel like it's it's going to be. Um, it, it, I think that LinkedIn for for folks who are just it, LinkedIn feels stodgy for a lot of people, honestly. And so I think it might bridge that gap a little bit. I think it's smart of Facebook. Um, why not? I mean, the more the merrier. Like, let's get more people jobs. Why fuss about, you know, because I think the people that are going to use LinkedIn for that are going to be a lot more like the curriculum vitae kind of people. Do you know what I mean? Where like they are serious. And it, there you go. Yeah. Anything that's that's a regulated industry is going to go over onto onto LinkedIn um, now. But if it's more like, hey, I just need to find somebody who's who wants to come work at my donut shop. I think it's going to be more grassroots. I agree. That's that's how I see it being played out. You your local businesses, your pizza parlors, your restaurants, things like that. I think coffee shops, I think they'll, they'll and I think they'll have better luck finding the right person there. I don't think, I don't think spending uh, to advertise or post your job on LinkedIn is the right platform for those, for those types of businesses. So that leads us. And it, and it, 
alienate you to people as well. You know, there it's a snobby, it's a snobby place over there on LinkedIn. It can be, it can be very much so. Yeah. Very much so. Yeah. And, and so here's the only, I kind of want to stay on this topic for a couple of minutes here. So like, you know, with the whole link, uh, with the whole Facebook jobs thing, I mean, um, if I post something on LinkedIn, a lot of times I get, you know, random recruiters, they'll reach out to me. Like I'll have, you know, you, you have nothing posted and you'll get, you know, just this bombardment of, you know, people saying, Hey, I, you know, I saw your profile. I think you'd be a good fit, you know, reach out to me. Um, I hope Facebook doesn't become like that, you know, but I think that, you know, with the, with the jobs feature, I mean, it really is also going to, this is another thing I think is actually unique is that when I go to, you know, LinkedIn to, or sorry, Facebook, sorry, I get this confused. When I go to Facebook to post a job, um, the other thing you can also do with this is, you can upload an image that's specific to um, you know the job you're trying to hire for. So yeah, and that I think is actually very unique compared to you know what LinkedIn offers. I mean, if I want to post a job, it's almost like writing a Facebook ad essentially. Um, there's an apply now button that's listed there. Um, you list all the salary requirements, so you take all that stuff out of the way. There's no back and forth of like, well, hey, here's this. Oh, give us this. Give us your resume. Oh, well, what's the salary? Like, you know, you don't have to wait to get that information. But then yeah. I think where the value is also going to be is in the fact that you're going to be able to have a custom image associated with your job. Uh -huh. so like, you know, here's the thing. Uh, don't don't use stock photography if you're going to do this, but, you know, pick out like an image that like shows your business, for instance. Like this gives you the opportunity to really showcase your business to totally. anyone in the band. Yeah. Hey, guys, can you post that Facebook link for people here, too? Because they need to see that. It's so yeah, cool. Sure. Um, cause I was definitely like, and you, uh, audience is what Christian is referring to because it really is, uh, it's super slick looking, just like Facebook can, you know, visually appeal to me a lot more than, than LinkedIn can. I think the thing that annoys this, me about LinkedIn is, um, I didn't finish college and mm -hmm. stop friggin' asking me where I went to college. You friggin' snob. Sorry. The, the booze is kicking in. Um, but you know what I mean? It's like, stop judging me. I didn't finish college. I don't have I don't have big debt. OK, that's not my world. So that that right there, does that make sense? You guys that kind of like just does not endear me to LinkedIn in some it's, ways. It's so like, it's a turn off as a user. That's a turn off for you. <laughs> but what are your turn offs? Yeah. That's what she said, right? Right. right? right? Is that what right. is that what you're trying to get to me? Are you trying to get, it, well, yeah. get that well, in me? I think it could be. I, I think I might actually go in and put pina coladas in getting caught in the rain. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, okay. And actually, you know, that's a really good point you make, Mia. Like the fact that, like all of these, like you know, LinkedIn is really pushing you to, like you know, well, where'd you go to college? Um, I mean, the direct, you know, the the way that things that like you know, everybody's careers have really shifted in the last few years. I mean, yeah. you, used to have, uh, you know, it used to be like, hey, I'm going to follow like my parents did. I'm going to work at the same place for 40 years. Um, sure. I, that really doesn't exist much these days. It doesn't. I and I feel like the you know where that really started to even out was the downturn of the economy. Yeah. I got you know up until then I had like well two years at NYU and this and I was like f that it doesn't matter it has nothing to do with what I do right now and so I feel like in the last eight years we have sort of that equalizing uh, feel to it. Um, but LinkedIn in a way didn't catch up to that. But again, Nick, it's about regulated industries. It's medical, it's, it's, it's legal, it's uh, banking, finance. Yeah, you, you, you can't roll up in there and be like, I didn't finish college, but trust me. Yeah, right? I, but I slept but at a Holiday Inn Express last night. You know, it's, yeah, but I did sleep at a Holiday Inn. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So yeah, I, think, uh, I think you're right. And, but I think we, we did cover a, a topic just a couple of days ago or a week or two ago, similar to this, that LinkedIn was targeting now uh, recruiters. That was who they wanted to really get. So that's why they keep asking the question. So more recruiters can find you. I don't remember when we, when we covered, when we covered, we covered that, the, the, those searching for jobs and those getting recruit and those recruiting for jobs. Yeah. Let's see. Um, it might've been episode 72. We talked about, uh, their desktop search. I think that might've, was that it maybe? I think that might have been it, Nick. Uh, it could have been in their desktop search a couple of weeks ago. So can I just point out real quick? So Beauty is just commenting um, as well. Uh, and so is Joanne. So this is the interesting thing. I think a lot of people sort of like 
you know, keep that to themselves until somebody says something. We're all like, yeah, like Joanne says, Mia, I'm with you, community college here. And I say, F you, LinkedIn. I retired at 32 from a high power position. Right. So there's no, and, and beauty is saying the same thing. Um, so there's, there's, there's no place for that in LinkedIn, but now Facebook is going to make it more palatable for you to say, this is who I am. And I'm going to, I'm going to showcase it this way instead of trying to fall into these, you know, very, um, segmented, you only fall into this category. Oh, you didn't finish. Well, wah, wah, right. Yeah, so, right. Excellent. So let's get to our big story tonight because, uh, we, we've gone a little bit over our normal, uh, timing but i think this big story can also be uh wrapped up pretty quickly this is new ways to watch video on facebook and they are so video uh, that they've been all in on right people are watching and sharing more video on facebook more than ever focus continuously on proving the experience uh today we're excited to share several updates that make watching video on facebook richer more engaging and more flexible. So the first one I'm not a big fan of, bringing sound to videos in the newsfeed. So they're going to auto play. Oh, no. Auto -play. Yeah. Sorry, I apologize, but I just, well, uh, that's like, <laughs> you, yeah, that wasn't throw up. That was, uh, uh, that's, that, what's one of your pet peeves is going to a website. Let's say you're on the phone, you're trying to look something yeah. up and it's like, Ah, you're like, oh, dude, 1990, whatever called or 2002 <laughs> called, and they'd right. like their, you know, their, their auto play back, you know, like, sweet. right. Goodness yeah, gracious. Yeah. But, they, but they claim that, uh, they claim that after <laughs> testing sound on the news feed and hearing positive feedback, we're slowly bringing it to more people with this update. Hey, do is this, is this the feedback? Is that how they listen to the feedback? <laughs> because yeah, I think. Uh, it, it it's bizarre uh but it it will with this update the sound fades in and out as you scroll through videos in the newsfeed but uh, this just sounds awful to me you know what you know what the hashtag cacophony okay right right it's just weird to hear like okay so like i mean are you, I just I don't see this going well i mean if i'm in the newsfeed i'm scrolling through and let's just say it's video 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 like you know, at some point it's going to like grab this video and it's going to start feeding a little bit of music in and it's going to go to the next one. It's going to start to fade it out and then it's going to somehow fade the other one in. And let me just tell you, to the me, only time that would work for me is if there were a bunch of otters. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to, if you want to roll at me with 15 videos of otters doing cute stuff, go for it with the sound. <laughs> but I, support, I support the otter thing. I love watching the otter videos and uh, I could see that, but I'll tell you what. I have kind of a sick sense of humor and I can't be standing in the line at a grocery store flipping That's through true. these and have one of those videos come up that is inappropriate and go right into the, you know, go right into the audio on one of those. Or I can't, you know, what I'll oftentimes do is I want to join somebody's live video, but I'm in a place that I cannot listen to it. So mm -hmm. I have to mute it, but show, but I'm there to show them that I'm supporting, but yes. I'm on the phone at the office or I'm, yes. you know, again, in another place where I'm unable to listen, but I want to show them that I'm there supporting. So the bathroom is also good. <laughs> the bathroom. Yeah, that's right. I didn't even think oh, of that so one. Like, you just hear this weird. Can I just tell you one of the funniest videos I watched and, and said the same thing happened to me. It was hilarious. It's the, the guy that wins that the, the woman asked him, what are you going to do if you win the lotto? You seen that one? I'm not sure if I have, you may have to well, share that. It's a little inappropriate, but I'm going to say it anyway. And he okay. literally goes, because I'm going to, I'm going to do, I'm going to buy a bunch of hookers and cocaine. And oh, I did I, see that. Yep. And the girl just was like, Whoa, wait, wait. You know what I mean? So that kind of thing too, just be like, you'd yeah. be in a bad Okay, what? <laughs> yeah. And and I feel like that's going to be that's the issue with this. I don't I don't um, need that playing while I'm also on the phone with an expert witness explaining him value, right? <laughs> yeah. Again, you with that regulated job, Nick. Jesus. Right. So So anyway, that uh, that was one of their changes. And uh, then they're going to have the vertical video, which I think this is okay. 
They've seen success on Snapchat with vertical video. So we've also made changes to make vertical videos look better on mobile devices. They began testing larger preview of vertical videos, and now it will expand to full screen. Okay. I'm okay with that. Uh, certainly, I don't like when I go onto a Facebook Live video and it's showing up in the top third uh, of my the top third of my phone. True. I feel like that's probably a little too late. I wish they would have figured it out a while ago because quite frankly, now when I do a lot of my promo videos, I, I pull in Snapchat and I pull in these and it just goes through it. And I think people are getting used to it. There used to be a lot more snobbery. Oh my God. Remember how people used to lose their mind if you were on something and like, turn it, turn it. You know, I think oh, I, God. better, but I, but I agree. That's great though. Yeah. I think that's a good one. Uh, and Christian thoughts on the vertical video. I think that it used to, you know, it used to be like one of those things where people really didn't like, like if you showed a vertical video and you had the bars in one, everybody was always like, you, you, you need to learn how to do this. And um, I think that, you know, I, I actually am excited they're going to do this because it really comes down to also just being aware of what you're filming. You know, some things work great in vertical, some things don't. Right. Um, you know, also, I mean, you, if you guys check out the Social Chef's YouTube channel, like there's a lot of times where I'm showing screenshots and whatnot, but what I do, for instance, with that is I put, you know, in the background, I put a background that, you know, is either blurred out. So I put, you know, a, um, a bokeh effect, you know, or something so that it doesn't look like, oh, hey, you know, he's got this like really boring video up. Oh, that's cool. Um, it's yeah. like an effect. It's like a, it's like a frame. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I try to do something like that. It makes a difference. So I'm cool with the fact that, you know, they're doing this. But I like, I think that it's also going to be about getting people to think about what they're posting, about what they're sharing, about what they're recording. Yeah, but I agree with that. And now the next, that's okay. <laughs> the next change that they're doing will be Android only devices right now. Uh, but they said sometimes in, and in the video that they showed uh, in this, in this uh, blog post or from their Facebook newsroom mm -hmm. was it, it looks pretty good that they know that sometimes you want to watch video and also want to keep scrolling or scrolling through your newsfeed, or you want to watch uh, picture in picture or you want to leave the Facebook app while still watching the video to do other things on your phone. Now that's really handy uh, because most of the time, a few minutes into a video, I get something else and I have to leave what I'm doing. And this could keep it, you, it, it becomes a picture in picture and then you can, uh, you can move it outside of the app. I think that's a brilliant idea. Do you know where that will work for me? I don't, do you guys watch Cheddar at all? Uh -huh. It's my new addiction. Yeah. It's my new the Today Show. Um, it, yeah. it, it's definitely geared in some ways. Initially, it was geared towards uh, millennials. And you guys, it comes on at seven o'clock here. I'm in Denver, Mountain Time. It's just called Cheddar. Literally, it's a live stream about uh, tech, media, social media, and just more. Not even lifestyle, but you know, like like they had they, they'll have the guy from GoDaddy on, and then they'll and then they they uh, broadcast live from the stock exchange floor. Mm -hmm. So a lot yeah. about about financial as well. Um, but that's the hard thing. We have this habit in the morning, like Charlie and I have to decide who's going to watch them on their phone because once you you're in, you can't you can't do anything else. I know these are uptown problems. I know this, but it's <laughs> nice. but I like it. I mean, I I do. I think this is a good feature. I'm sad, not being an Android user. I'm sad that it's not coming to the iPhone yet, but I uh, imagine it'll come in time. Android user. So guess what? He, okay, that's cool. We have a two family two phone family. Family. Nick, I don't, I don't, you know, in looking at that video, I don't, I've had this on my iPhone for a while um, for watching video, but I've not had the out of the app piece. Okay. And I don't, I don't think that that's actually going to come to iPhone unless they can probably work something out just because it probably is an ecosystem type or sorry, it's probably more of an operating system type Could issue. be, could be. Um, being able to take your you know, apps outside. Interesting of, to see it's so. going to Android first. Um, after all this time. Yeah. That is very interesting, actually, because most of the time it's the complete opposite. Yeah. Hey, we're launching an iPhone and we'll have one in an Android. Oh, my and, God. I had FOMO you know. for years and I'd bring an Android, and then I switched over. <laughs> Good Lord. That's right. Now, the last piece of this, and then we'll move on to some tools for tonight. The last piece of this is the mm -hmm. Facebook video app for TV. Finally, we've heard that people want more options for how and where they watch Facebook videos. Today... We're announcing a new Facebook video app for TV, which will roll out soon to app stores, 
for Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, and Samsung Smart TV. So I think this is good. I would probably, certainly video, live video such as what we're doing now and streaming to Facebook is cutting into my TV watching time. I'd like to watch it on a bigger screen. That's what she said. <laughs> it was only a matter of time. It was... It took me 54 minutes to get to it. That's what she said. I'm really proud yeah, well, of it. I tried to encourage it earlier on. I don't think, I think I, I, I cut I out, though. Big, dude. I, I, you got you to gotta work for that. I'm not that easy. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> oh, so good. That was Christian, good. What are, your, what are your thoughts on this? Um, I like the um, – let's see. So – I think that this is actually a really good move. I think that this is also kind of pushing us towards kind of what you just talked about, which is social TV. Um, a lot of people, you know, they're not, they're not, you know, waiting around for cable much anymore. I mean, there's, there's too many other things that you can now tune into. Um, you know, if, if somebody's got a good, you know, broadcast, hopefully, you know, like for instance, if you want to watch social chatter, you'll be able to watch it on your Apple TV at some point, you'll be able to watch it on your Amazon fire. Uh, you know, I like that. And um, I think that, you know, this is a good progression for Facebook to take live video mainstream. But you know what I kind of like to you guys? I feel like we're, um, there, there's this constant conversation about untethering, um, you know, to getting away from, you know, I mean, just, oh my gosh, we went through, I don't know how old you guys are, but like, you know, as a little kid, like the five channels, you know, literally, you know, the, 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 the national anthem and then the, the Native American, you know, it's <laughs> like in the picture, like I'm, I remember seeing that and then going to that, the, the cable um, thing and then going, blowing up 57 channels, nothing on. And now I think people are starting to really, really simplify. And, you know, it, it's kind of cool to see. I think that would be fun if you do have a big TV. And I, I don't, I, I, because of traveling, I scaled down my life so much. Although I do go to other people's houses and go like this at their big TV. You know, <laughs> they're like, where, where, where's Mia? She's gone. Um, but I, I like this. I think that's kind of cool. Like to, yeah. to still make that big screen thing without still being tethered to all these different, you know, remember, remember when you had to have the package with the, with the home phone and the, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they still require a lot of it actually. Cause now what they're doing is, you know, they're increasing the cost of, you know, having a cable subscription and they're also encouraging, you know, they're really trying to upsell you on the fact that like, Hey, we've got, you know, 200 channels, 300 channels, whatever number it is. Like, it really doesn't matter. It comes down to what do I want to watch? That's right. Um, I can't and, find it on YouTube. And, and I found out <laughs> real easily in our days on Blab that I wanted to watch something. It, not only, but I did enjoy watching something where I was also interacting with the people and having a good time with people and, and, and yes. really communicating with people. That started to take some of my time away from the, the Netflix watching time. So I think this is a great move. Christian, yeah, we by the way, Netflix silo, right? Yeah, yeah. By the way, Nick, you gave me a really, you gave me a thought here on this whole like you know uh, TV thing and, and the fact that like you're inter you you said you like interacting with people on live video. I'm actually wondering, you know, you know how okay, so TV went from like you know regular 120 hertz where it didn't look very realistic to where all of a sudden it looked like, hey, I'm watching this live. Okay, um, now I'm wondering. How is this going to impact, you know, like a celebrity, for instance, or an act, you know, a famous actor that's on, you know, a TV show, for instance, are they going to, you know, have some sort of feature where they're like stopping in the middle of the show and actually talking to participants? Because you have two different models here, um, one, you know, and you know, at some point, this live thing is going to take hold and people are going to say, hey, I want to be part of something versus I want to sit here and watch somebody else. do something. Yeah, yeah. Very George Jetson. Very George Jetson, yeah. I think, uh, and, and I think that'll go further and further along with augmented reality and virtual reality. We're now interacting. Yes, Mia, raise, well, no, wait, raise, wait, raise your hand again. Raise your hand again. Okay, okay, you can talk. Do you like how I just do this? Yeah. Um, I, I have impulse issues, so I'm like, I'm just going to do this and see if anybody pays attention. <laughs> can, I, can I just tell you? So it's so interesting because I haven't had a TV for about two years, and then um, Charlie's got this, you know, the, the newest TV. Well, I watch Star Wars, and I have to say, I I don't like that way that looks. I like that older look to it. And when I've been watching it, does that make sense to you guys? Like to me, it looks like live TV. 
And it's changed the way some of these really classic old films for me. Right. And I thought it was me or the booze. And it wasn't. Um, and so we've talked about that of like, I really don't like, and it's kind of what you're talking about, Nick, too, that like you're you, both of you, that it's like you can have that, um, that, you know, the virtual reality right there. Pixelation anxiety is a real issue. It's a thing, right? <laughs> um, and, and, and so just, I've really been uh, struggling with that of watching these, you know, I'll, I'll see, oh, you know, you all have those favorite movies that you can watch at any point. Um, and Star Wars is, is clearly one of them for me. And I watch it, I'm like, Mer, I don't feel like my 12 year old man. I feel like I'm in, I feel like it just got, it, it just got um, flipped. I don't know. Interesting. I, I completely agree with you because there's a lot of times I'll go watch, you know, it could be like an old horror movie, for instance. And it just doesn't, you know, it, what you were, by the way, what she was talking about, everybody was, you know, she's talking about the, um, the frame rate of the TV. It's like, everything is moving so quickly um, because it has a higher frequency now. Is that what um, it is? It Christian, is. sorry. And I, I really haven't, because I don't right. have it. I don't understand what that process has been to change the perception. It, it's, it, it literally is perceived differently in my brain. Mm -hmm. No, I, and I agree. I, same thing here. When I first got, like, when we upgraded to regular TV like that, I was like, wow, this looks really cool, like, watching something. Like, it gives you different depths of things. Yes. But at the same time, it changes, you know, like we just said, like, it changes all the classics. You know, it changes. You know, Nobody's ever said that. that. Why are we not talking about this? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it is a, if Mia's going to become an activist, this is going to be it. This is it. That and, you know, that and animals, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Like, okay, yeah. Uh, animal, uh, you know, animal rights. Hugs <laughs> uh, for Mia. That's a new hashtag. HFN. Christian, um, we're running over a little bit here. Shall we knock out? Can we knock out two tools real quick for everybody? Sure. Mia, did you have anything else you wanted to say on that? She doesn't have anything else to say. I'm, I'm just, I, I just feel understood, and that's all I have to say. <laughs> I feel By the way, no, no worries. We're, you know, we try to keep it. To, you know, we value everybody's time. Um, it's, you know, ten o'clock, so we're only a couple minutes over today. Yeah. Um, so tool one for everybody, by the way, is a tool called, um, I'm not sure if I'm saying this right, uh, Lumiere. Uh, basically, it's a, uh, you know, here's talking about video a lot more. We're talking about, um, so basically what this tool is, is it's a tool for adding effects uh, to video on your, uh, in this case, there's an iPhone app and an Android app. So basically it's a photo, video, editor, art, and selfie effects, basically. Okay. Um, free app. Uh, well, it's a, it's a freemium app, but it's cool because you can basically record your video and then you can throw in, for instance, some confetti, but then you can use your finger to change, um, you know, potentially the motion of that, that object that you've added to the video. Um, you know, so there's, you know, there's that, you've got, you know, some other neat little features on here. There's, I think, over 100 free effects that you get included. Uh, but basically, it's a way for you to improve the quality of your photos, your, or sorry, of your videos and stuff that you're sharing. Um, you know, whether it's on Instagram or Facebook or YouTube or Snapchat or whatever channel you want to use. Um, so you know, that's app number one. Okay. Reminds me of the uh, add-ons that Twitter made for their images, their image editing and uh, last year sometime. So, but it sounds like this is much more advanced than that. Um, it is. And I guess the one thing also is like, I guess for me, like I love, you know, I love video editing. I love just the whole like, you know, just getting it, you, you know, I've been experimenting with different uh, live streaming services. You know, we've been getting it, you know, new ways to, you know, make some additions to the show. And, you know, this kind of stuff, I, I love this stuff, but I also know behind the scenes, it takes a lot of work to be able to create this, but it's great to see it's available now for anyone to be able to just open up, you know, a video and add some stuff to it and do some of that without having to understand all the technical pieces to it. Cool. So tool number two, and this is actually one that I, I, I think Nick, you and I talked about this earlier in the week, but I am really excited about this one. This is Amazon Chime. And I wouldn't be surprised if the way they did this, they were over there, um, you know, like probably trying to come up with a name, like what is Amazon Prime? What rhymes with Amazon Prime? Ha, huh, Chime, <laughs> Amazon Chime. Yeah. So Amazon Chime is a new video conferencing. Uh, it's basically a competitor with, you know, Skype, GoToMeeting, GoToWebinar, Facebook Messenger, FaceTime, um, am I leaving any of the other services out? Probably. There's so many of them. I like, I just, but it's basically, me, I just, I just like downplayed everybody. And... <laughs> <laughs> so basically it's a, it's an app for letting you uh, communicate with people, but it's really great because like, you know, if you're on your mobile device, 
Um, you can video conference up to eight people. Um, there's uh, a lot of control over like, you know, meetings. Like you don't have to deal with sending out like specific links for your meetings. It's really easy to get a custom URL. Um, but it, it works for Android. It works for um, iPhone. It works for Mac. It works for Windows. Um, and then the other thing is it's, you know, it's free to a certain extent, but then it goes all the way up to a paid plan. But Nick, I think you and I talked about this. Like what, what is it with the paid plan that we you know, have been looking at compared to the reliability? Other we want it to stick around. Yes. And it, yeah. And look, 15 bucks per month per user for the pro plan. I mean, it's almost like, you know, that, cute boys that come to your school and then they leave in, in the middle of the, the <laughs> semester. You're like, really? I just, I just got to know you. You're a cool friend, right? <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. It is like that. Yeah. You like that? And, and so you know, we experienced gives, that a lot with Amazon gives me some, some feeling that it will be around for a while. So if I'm going to spend 15 bucks, then at least it'll be reliable. You know what? Nick's getting all the feels there. Yay. <laughs> Did you want me to say it again? Or were you trying to urge me to say that's what she said? Nope. Nope. Oh, I'm okay. Just, all good. <laughs> we're running over, so I'm going to keep it yeah. down. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's cool. it. I, I got wrap it out. up, right? That is actually it. Yes. Um, I want to say it's been a blast having you on the show, by the way. Do you have anything, any projects going on that you want to tell everybody about or tell them where they can connect with you? Uh, please subscribe at Mia on the go. I am uh, leaving for Thailand in two weeks. I'm going to be traveling with a group of chefs and some pretty cool people and working with the Thai government and uh, hopefully um, hanging out with elephants. I might try and make out with one. I'm just, it's, it's it might be weird. <laughs> <laughs> my elephants are on my bucket list. So uh yes, so put but um everything is at Mia Voss on the go on my social oh, because yeah. people are yeah. on the go because they're jerks. And uh but yeah, at um uh, so yeah, it's actually at me I mean, thank you, Mia Voss. But my website is uh Mia on the go. Okay. Thanks for having yeah. me on, you guys. This is so valuable. Wow, that was that was really fun to chew the fat on that. I'm I'm really glad you okay. came, Mia. I really I it, it is and I had I told Christian about it. I said, it, what was really cool is that you put off something else that sounded a lot more exciting. Like that went a really long way with me to when you told me that you had that other option to go there. It really goes somebody to have that kind yeah. of commitment. It it really goes a long way. Thank you very much. Thank. You. By the way, Mia, um, you know. It's been a pleasure having you on, and uh, I would say this, I mean, uh, we should probably chat sometime. I, mean, I also, um, I went to culinary school, so that's kind of where the whole social chef's concept came, up, uh, came from. Okay. Yeah. So th there's more of a tie into that. I'm working on some website updates, but, um, you know, kind of get a little more story on that. But, yeah, we should definitely uh, definitely chat. I sometime. love that. And can I so. just give a, a shout out to Don, who's posting all my links in here. Joanne, who I got to meet through online, same thing. I got to see her in Boston. Um, so thanks, you guys. This is a brilliant idea. So I feel like I'm in the know. Well, we hope that you'll uh, consider coming back when when you don't have other really exciting things going on. So maybe in the future, <laughs> come back and tell us about Thailand. Right. Call me and ask me uh, if I'll come on. And they'll be like, let me check my schedule. Something cooler is on. No, I, I want that. But I want that kind of honesty up front. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. Thank you, you guys. And thank you, everybody, for watching. Ross, Joanne, Don, thanks for being here. Lisa, Jay Garrett, we really appreciate all your support. Good night. Have a great night, everyone. Bye.